Trips tight end master. Father of trips tight end. No. Goat of trips tight end. Looking to take your Madden game to the next level while dominating kids in weekend league and learn high level schemes from some of the best Madden pros in the world? Make sure you check out Hot Route Tips and use code CHAOS for 10% off at checkout. What's good everybody, Chaos here and today I'm bringing you guys one of the best plays in all of Madden 20. You guys can see on the screen the play that we're going to be running today is PA Counter Go. Now for those of you who don't know me, maybe you guys are new to the channel, you guys just got here this year. I've been running Trips Tight End my entire Madden career. I ran it last year, the year before, even a little bit before that. I've been running it forever. Now this year I'm actually not running it. If you guys are interested in my ebooks, you guys can find them over on HotRoute.Tips. I actually just dropped my Split Close ebook on there last week, and I truly do believe it is the absolute best balanced offense in the entire game. It allows you to throw straight up lasers, and also at the same time, it allows you to audible into run plays that are extremely effective, especially against the meta defenses. With that being said, the Split Close ebook is out of the Miami Dolphins playbook, which I believe is one of the best playbooks in the game. It has an amazing Split Close, which is why my ebook's out of it, but it has several other formations that you can pass out of and you can be truly effective with. One of which being Trips Tight End, which has probably one of the best passing plays in the entire game of Madden 20, which is PA Counter Go. Now don't get me wrong, this play can be found in other books. It can be found in Bills, Browns, Chargers, Vikings, Patriots, and Raiders. However, if you're able to combine this Trips Tight End with how good it is, with my ebook over at HotRot.Tips with its split close, you truly could be unstoppable. And if we get 300 likes on this video, I will drop you guys part two to this trip tight end scheme and just add more plays for your guys' toolbox to help annihilate your opponents. But enough plugging for me, let's get into actually why you guys are here, which is how to dot your opponent out of PA counter go. So first I'm just gonna call the play, and I'm gonna be giving you guys some timestamps because I'm gonna be breaking down this play in pieces. So first and foremost, we're gonna be breaking down why this crosser is so good and what makes it so great. And then we'll eventually just move on to how the play is gonna be set up and how you're gonna dot your opponent every single time. But first let's just start with this crosser. And again, I will give you guys timestamps putting you guys in different areas of where the play is getting set up and kind of the design of it and how we build to it, right? But if you guys wanna skip, I won't be mad at you, but I do think you guys should see what makes this so good. Now, let's start off here. If they don't press, this crossing route is gonna beat every single coverage by itself. They're in a Tampa 2 right now. I'm just running, I'm just getting this drag to get it, uh, get it out the way and just have nothing in the area. You see it gets over the cloud, underneath the deep half. Again, this is not our actual play setup. Just running this to show you guys how effective this crosser can be. I'll do it again just so you guys can see it's consistent, but I'm just putting a drag on Kittle so you can see no routes in the area pulling or pushing any of the zones out of the way from this crosser. It just gets over the cloud underneath the deep path. Now audible to cover three. I'll put cover three with cloud flats out there. And you guys can see this route, same exact thing. It's just gonna have nothing around it. Just the crosser, it's gonna get underneath the deep third and over the cloud flat. Now, something I do like to do is I like to lowball this. Reason being, it kind of makes the guy take a little bit of a false step and you can fit that pass in the pocket. Now, I'll go to the replays here. It kind of makes uh, Gilmore here take one little small little false step when you lowball this and gives you a little bit of an area. So you see how he gets that little step on him? It gets in a nice little pocket. I'll show you guys it one more time here. Audible to cover three. Put cloud flats, and again, it's going to get over the cloud, underneath the deep third, and it's going to get in a nice little pocket. Now, this is only if they're not pressing, it's going to get open every time against everything. So you see, pretty consistent, right? Now, I'm going to get into the part where if they start baseline pressing or just regular pressing, what you can do to beat it. Now, it's still not going to be the main setup yet, but just a counter to them baseline pressing or pressing with deep thirds or deep quarters out there. But now let's get into what they're going to do to counter you, right? So the way they're going to do that is with a baseline press. Now, if they baseline press out of cover two, you guys are going to see it's still going to get open. I'll quickly show you guys that. If they're still in cover two, they'll still get over the cloud underneath the deep half right in that perfect little pocket. But where you're going to have trouble is if they baseline press out of a cover three, you're going to see this deep third is going to take away our crosser now. When he wasn't pressed, you had a pocket to throw it. But when he is pressed, he's going to squat underneath it like that, and then he matches to it, and there's really nowhere to throw it. Never open, the guy's there the entire time. Now the way to the counter that is with motion. You guys are probably gonna say, well, you could just motion a streak over and push him back, right? Well, after this patch, the guys are basically psychic. The guys will turn off of streaks as soon as you pass the ball and they'll turn and make a play on it. And 
they'll just play it out of nowhere. It's actually wild. So the way that you're gonna to wanna to do this is, you're gonna to wanna to do a little bit of a secret motion. Now what you can do with Samuel, instead of motioning him to the right and having him go all the way to the sidelines, you can actually motion him to the left. And when you do that, he's gonna still go to the right, but he's gonna stop before he gets to the sidelines. He's gonna sit about right there on the numbers. Now I'm just gonna get Kittle out of here. Again, this is not the same, the main setup yet. I'll get to that after this. I just wanna show you guys the streak with this crosser and how it can basically make this crosser basically unguardable. Now, if they do a deep third with a regular press, it's gonna be a touchdown. The deep third's gonna press the streak and the streak's just gonna burn him deep. And if he doesn't burn him deep, it's because he got pressed so many times and then the crosser beats him deep. So either or, don't really worry about press. It's really just baseline press that you need to worry about because it's gonna push the streak back. It's gonna pull it in away from the sidelines while also pushing it deep like a regular streak would do. And you're gonna have a pocket on the sidelines to throw this crosser. So you're gonna see here, nice little pocket right there around the sidelines. And you guys see he turns around to make a play on the ball, right? He comes close, he almost gets there. But because of the low ball, you can fit this pass in and because of this streak not being outside. So you're seeing on the streak, you see how he comes in he doesn't stay all the way on the sideline. He comes in a little bit. He takes like five, six steps in and he almost gets even with the guy. Instead of being out here, he's inside. And because of that, he has to come diagonally all the way back here to make this play instead of just being able to come straight down on the ball, right? So you see that and bam, you're able to fit that pass in with a little bit of space. I'll show it to you guys one more time here. Just get this uh, tight end out of the way. Oh, I actually motion to the right. That's my mistake, didn't mean to do that, but it's good for you guys to see. You guys can see how much farther he goes out, right? I'll leave this in, usually I'll cut if I made a mistake like that, but to be honest with you, I think it's good for you guys to see, well, just about like four or five yards difference of where he goes when you motion him to the wrong way. So I motion him to the left here and you guys see where he stops at. Now we'll audible back into cover three, do the same thing, baseline press, and you're gonna see, just gonna have just enough space to fit this crosser in because of that motion that we did. Bam, right there just inside. Now that pocket is very, very tight. That pocket's only open at all because of the streak that we're doing and because of our low pass. Guys, if you don't know how to low pass, left trigger is how you low pass, right here. L2 or left trigger, whatever your console you're playing on. Now I will put a deep quarter out there and you guys will see the same results will happen. You will have a little bit of a pocket to throw and you'll be able to make the play. Now again, guys, I know it looks a little bit tight. You gotta trust it, it's there. And then that's why at the end of the video, we're gonna break down the full setup on this play of how to beat every single coverage. But this play needs to be usered. It's a very, very good crosser. And with this motion, with this streak, you see you have just enough space to fit some passes in. That's for the deep quarter. You guys see it beats the deep third, it beats the deep quarter. Now we're gonna get into the last portion of this video. We're gonna break down the full setup to this scheme. All right, guys, time for the full setup. Now, for the full setup, you're gonna motion this guy over on a streak just before, like before. You're gonna drag the outside guy, and you're gonna put an out route on Kittle. Reason being is, this crosser does take a little bit, right? If they blitz you or something, you need to have hot reads on the play that you can throw if you don't have time to throw this crosser late. So if they blitz you out of cover two, you can throw this drag. If they blitz you out of uh, cover three, you can throw that drag, you can throw that out route. And I'll show you those reads now, right? So. Say they're gonna cover two, blitz in this guy, blitz in this guy, this is their user. Just assume they're gonna use the crosser, right? Here's what you can do. As soon as you hike the ball, you can throw that drag. Quick hot read, before they can come in, before they can get their blitz through, you're throwing that drag. Same thing over here with, uh, with the out route, right? So here's the setup again, motioning to the guy to the left, guys, not to the right, you're motioning to the left. But if they're gonna cover two, You guys can see here, you can quickly throw this out route. Now I like to lowball it, just to be safe. I lowball a lot of things this, guy, this year, guys. If you don't wanna lowball it, don't. But it's, if you see this outside guy press this streak, it means he is on the cloud flat. So you see him bump this streak here, bam. You know you can read right there, cloud flat, and you can throw this out route. It's an easy read for you. If he doesn't bump him, he's obviously in the hard flat and he's taking away your out route. But those are hot reads against the blitz in case you don't have time to throw the crosser, right? But they're also not bad against zone, so um, it's gonna hold down the cloud flight a lot of the time with that out route. Um, with the drag, it's a little bit of a uh, late read across the middle, so say, say they're running this, but this is their user, right? This is their mid read, and just imagine the guy manned up to the crosser is the, the user taking that away. You can throw this drag across the middle of the field. Bam, right there. Now obviously the crosser was gonna beat the man, so if I actually saw man-to-man -man on the crosser, 
I would throw it still probably if I had time. You're gonna see here late before I throw this drag that he was getting ready to go right by him. Like right here, you see him running by him. You can throw that crosser on the sidelines, make the play, take your bigger chunk. But imagine that's a user and he's actually taking that away. You can take your drag right here and you're gain, what is that, six, seven yards? Whatever that case may be, take that, go on to the next down. The reason why you have that crosser on the field is so that they have to user it and you can take that away. Right, so this is your setup. Obviously, the crosser is still your main main go-to on this play. If they if they try to stop, if they I motion to the right again, I'm gonna leave it in, guys. Don't make that mistake. If you do, just motion them back, then motion them again. Or if you don't have time, call a timeout or something. If you really really want to win this play, but make sure you're motioning to the left. I'm leaving this in so that you guys can learn the lesson. It's not because I'm lazy. It's not. Now all I was saying to you guys was. Make sure you guys take your underneath stuff. If they take away your crosser, if they user it, take your drag, take your out route, take your five to seven yards. You don't have to get 30 every single play. Take your read, go on to the next play. But if they do give you your crosser, guys, you hit them where it hurts. You take your 30 yards and you make them respect that crossing route and make them guard it the next time. Because if they keep giving that to you, you're just gonna keep picking up big chunks. Now, you guys see I did use the 49ers. You don't have to use the 49ers for this, but they do have an ability on their tight end that allows you to put different routes on him, and that just makes this play even better. So if you put the outside guy on a, on, on a drag still, you motion over the streak, and you can put Kittle on a post. Now what that does is it creates an extra high low between the drag and the post, and it's just two, and another extra route along with the crosser where you can pick up a big chunk of yards, right? So you'll see where this thing gets to on the field. It gets to a really nice spot above the vert hook, and it sits in about underneath the deep blue but over the vertical for about 15 yards really nice addition to the play if you guys have a tight end with the route ability that's something you can do to mix it in another really good option for you guys but if you don't have it not the end of the world the other setup that we have is very very effective as well but you guys will see uh that was cover two now i'll go to cover three it's going to get over the hook curls as well and it gets in a really nice pocket for you from right there right above the hook curls and the vert hooks right like a perfect spot while you also still have your crosser going the other way that they have to worry about so it's a very very good play that's the full setup for you guys i'll leave it on the screen one more time for you guys to see it again i can't stress enough motion to the left not to the right so he doesn't go fully to the sideline but this is it guys make sure you guys are using this play if you guys want to use it with miami dolphins uh ebook on split close if you guys want to mix these together it can be really, really deadly. But if you don't want to buy the ebook over on uh, Hot Rods on Tips, that's cool too. This scheme is really good. And again, if we get 300 likes, I will drop you guys the second part of this scheme. But that's it for me, man. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this was helpful for you guys. I hope you learned something. That's it. Take it easy. Peace.